It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, a show for the most passionate fan base in the NBA. Covington playing Levine, top side three ball, bam! Onions, baby onions! Zach Levine in the Bulls! Your number one source for Chicago Bulls news and stories. Levine to White, this time he gives it to Williams for three. The rookie! The Pota! What a shot! Host Jordan Malley and Matt Peck dive into the best Bulls news and stories around the NBA. Jordan Malley. Jordan, great to see you. Through our 670 score scope. Yep. Where is he? And it's right over there, Bill. Are you flat out kidding me? Matt Peck used to do a great job with the Bulls Outsider Show. Now he's doing Locked on Bulls. There he is, human Forburn. Oh, don't mess with the boots. But watch this crossover. Okay. Bulls bird of free league ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. goodness. That is- so kick back. I'm not. Relax. I'm not. And get ready for the best hour of your day. Uh, you know, I'm not. You can just see the vibe. And these guys are men. Locked on Bulls starts now. I love it. Pass to Levine with a right-handed jackhammer slam. Oh, my goodness, that was filthy. Here are your hosts, Jordan Malley and Matt Peck. I'm getting out the dancing shoes. From Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jordan Malley. Along with me is Matt Peck. Heck. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Go to builtbar.com, use promo code LOCK15, and you get 15% off your next order. Hit us up on our text and voicemail line, 331-979-1369. Your text, your voicemails, anything you got for us. We're on Twitter, at Jordan C. Malley, at Bulls underscore Peck, and at Locked On Bulls. Happy Friday to you, Matt. Um, Unfortunately, I wish it didn't come down to this, man, but uh, it's a do or die weekend for the Bulls and for real, for real this time. So how are you, Jordan? What's up, man? What's up, Bulls Nation? Happy Friday. I don't know about you, but it is a very happy Friday for me as a Bears fan. I can't believe the Bears traded up and got Justin Fields last night. I came into last night's draft so disengaged from the Bears. I was so disgusted by their season in 2020. And I just was like completely out of faith. I, I was Natalie and Brulia, out of faith, torn, bound and broken on the floor about my Bears fandom. And lo and behold, Ryan Pace actually did something that has the fan base believing again. So I'm 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 ready. I'm ready to be hurt, which I feel like is good because I'm I'm thinking we're gonna watch a Bulls loss to the Bucks tonight. <laughs> Yeah, it's unfortunate, man, because these three games are going to be tough. Bulls play three games in four nights tonight. A lot of parallels with the bull with the Bulls and the Bears. What's going on with the Bears right now sort of reflects on what we've been through the last four or five years, man. Um, It's it's cool to see another fan base in this city. You're not super passionate about the Bears, but you can kind of, I don't know, draw parallels to what has gone on with this team over the last couple of seasons. Um, So it's cool. Good for the city. Uh, And go check out our friend Lauren Cox, who does Locked on Bears every single day. He's doing a great job with uh, draft coverage all weekend long. So go check out Locked on Bears. Matt, I wanted you to hear something from Thaddeus Young as we were talking about the, the Knicks loss on the road the other day and just like sort of what happened at the end of the game and what's been kind of a common theme for this team over the last couple of seasons. But more specifically this year, it seems like it's popped up more and more. Uh, he talks about what affected them at the end of the game, more so talked about things mentally that affected them more so than physically or plays that ended up happening. So he was asked about, do he does he feel like the team is mentally tough? Uh, take a listen. Try to keep playing no matter what. Um, I think that's our, our biggest thing, just playing uh, no matter what happens. Um, we, got, we got a little frustrated as a team and as a group. Um, I think uh, Ty's got a tech, coach got a tech. Like, we we can't have that at those moments of the games where, you know, guys are getting texts and, you know, they're already making a run and they're already pushing the lead out. Uh, them getting texts, you know, just worsens the blow. So, you know, we just got to figure out how to stay uh, poised and focused throughout the course of the game and um, just uh, try to try to just keep building. Do you think this team is is mentally tough enough to to handle everything that's being thrown at it right now with Zach being out and and the schedule getting as t- tough as it is? Yeah, I mean, I think we're mentally tough. I think we just have to that mental toughness. We just have to you know play play mental tough throughout the a 48, 48 minute game throughout the course of a whole game. 
know, we we show mental toughness for bits and pieces and spurts, but you know, it, it has to be over the course of a 48 minute game. Dad, I wanted to ask you the same thing I asked Vooch a minute ago. Do you guys feel comfortable yet with so many new pieces to get on each other when, when guys make mistakes? I mean, not just like try to correct them, but really get on them because the stakes are high now. Uh, I mean, I can't speak for you know everybody else. <laughs> you know, and how their mindset is, but, you know, I feel comfortable, you know, with, um, you know, telling guys what, what we need to do or, you know, getting on guys and stuff like that, because I want them to do the same to me. Um, so, you know, I feel comfortable, um, but I can't speak for everybody else. It's been sort of a theme of this team, man, the entire season is like, at points, it feels like this team is completely mentally strong and they're willing to battle through anything. But as of the post all-star break it feels like it's sort of broken down and we talk about individual players but we haven't talked about the team collectively and I think this is something that Donovan had touched on a couple of months ago it's just another thing that's coming up but we've how many conversations have we had in over the last two weeks about this team specifically complaining about calls maybe letting it affect plays two three four plays after something has happened continues to snowball um, it was nice to hear Thaddeus Young address that. The only thing I didn't think of, though, was if the guys were actually comfortable enough to really just get in each other's faces the way you would with a teammate three, four, five years you've been with, as opposed to a guy a few weeks. Yeah, it's certainly um, a, a good question that was posed to who is, you know, undoubtedly the veteran leader on this team. And I think Thad's response was... Uh, you know, accurate in saying he certainly feels comfortable telling people, hey, you know, this is your job. You need to do this job. You didn't do your job on this possession because he is the elder statesman of this roster. And maybe there is some awkwardness, you know, feeling out stage of not only playing a new system, as Donovan has talked about to the media several times after these recent stretch of games, we've completely changed our system based on these trades that we made. And it it it, it is an adjustment period. And maybe there are some feelings of, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I don't want to make the new guys uncomfortable. The new guys, veterans like Vooch, like Daniel Tice, saying, you know, is it my place already to, to speak out and say, you know, I, I'm a veteran leader on this team. I know I'm new, but I need to call you guys out at halftime or after the game for doing this, that, and the other thing. It's, you know... At the, you know, at the crux of it, these are all professional athletes. And they, I think, all know where they rank on this team as far as what their role is, the level of importance, and their veteran, uh, you know, status in the league. So it shouldn't be a problem. And, you know, whether or not that ties into stuff about getting frustrated, guys getting texts, uh, you, know, uh, you know, complaining about calls, I don't know if there's a great correlation there because you've seen – Guys, whether they are vets, young guys, or Billy himself, all becoming uh, people who are getting kind of sucked into letting the officiating affect them recently. And like the Knicks game was the most recent and most egregious example, I think, because even as someone who doesn't like to blame the rest for losses, like Donovan himself said, yeah, there were a few questionable and maybe even bad calls, but you know, what was it that or was it the fact that 25 times tonight we got hosed in the pick and roll with our defense that couldn't stop them? So yeah, the, the the officiating was bad, but there are other reasons that we're losing. Right. We always talk about context on the show. And, you know, I think about the early things that happened to this Bulls team, too, that affected them late is like calls that didn't go their way, compiling to bad losses. Like think about the Golden State game with the game winner. What was that first week? You think about uh, the Portland game where they called a jump ball for Zach Levine and that turned into a Dame Lillard game winner. Like I forgot about that one. See, like those are the types of things that have happened late in the fourth quarter to the Bulls that haven't, you know, it's a coin toss on a lot of those. And there's plenty of others I'm probably forgetting over the course of this season. So I understand why guys are frustrated now, but I think I'm more visibly seeing it from guys that have just been traded over yet, not the guys that have been here necessarily. I'm with you though. I, I think it's tough to adjust to new teammates and it's tough to adjust to a new system. And then you compile that with not having your, your real leader in, in Zach, your Zach's your star. He's your leader of this team without him in a crucial stretch of this season, things can boil over and get very, very frustrating very quickly. And it doesn't help too that the bulls are playing seemingly like every good team in the NBA over the last month. And they're going to continue to do that, or at least playoff qualifying teams uh, to conclude this season. But um, like I said a couple weeks ago, man, 
the vets have to they have to show the younger guys, especially the younger guys that are playing important roles on this team, like Kobe White, Patrick Williams, who are playing in those crucial down the stretch minutes that these types of things you can't let affect you. If you do, it's going to compile, it's going to snowball, and it's going to turn into losses and and not even giving yourself a chance to dig yourself out of a hole like that said. So um, I think it's good, refreshing reminder to hear from some of the veterans on this team. And it was good that Betty is young addressed that. Cause I don't think that this team is mentally weak. Um, I just think it's a frustrating three weeks of bulls basketball and having to do that without Zach Levine makes things even more frustrating. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I would say, I think it's fair to, at least suggest that there are individuals on this team who are mentally weak as a team collectively do individuals, you know, the, the weak link in a chain, whatever it might be, do the people who are mentally weak on this team drag down the collective in those moments where, Hey, we just got punched. Can we get back up? And, and deliver a punch back? Or are we going to let it, you know, uh, wreck our focus and take control of the game and things spiral out of control, whether it's the officials or what your opponent is doing to you? And, I, I mean, I, I wish that this team were mentally stronger than they appear to be because, you you know, you were just rattling off, off the top of your head, all of these winnable games that the Bulls have had this season where maybe if it's about execution late in close games we have a much different record than we do now and we're not saying holy crap we're two games back of the final play-in spot with 10 games to go we are in do or die mode right now and how much of those near win that turns into a loss is about having the mental fortitude and mental strength to get through executing those down the stretch plays the correct way as opposed to be like having yourself being taken out, taken out of the game mentally, and you make those lapses, you make those mistakes, you make those crucial late game turnovers um, or, or defensive lapses, and it's I'm sure something that AK and Eversley and Billy Donovan will talk about at length this off season to say we need more mental fortitude on this roster, and how do we go about doing that? And man, it's it, it's too like. It's not us picking on the Bulls either or just saying it. it's their fault for blowing games or it's the refs' fault for blowing games for all of the games that they've lost late in the stretch. For as many games as they want to blame the refs down the stretch, we can also point to a lot of games that the Bulls lost because they pissed it away. Uh, I think about the OKC game right off the bat, man, the OKC game. How do you lead the game for seven, 17 points with two and a half left and, and you blow a lead? Those are the types of losses. So there's for every one that the refs may have screwed the Bulls over this season, there's one where the Bulls have done it to themselves. I'd love to go back in those games, though, where they've done it to themselves and seen how many times late in stretches did a call not go their way and they let it affect them for the rest of the game. I, I bet you there's a plenty of examples there. Those are just bad habits that they have to crack. And it's not necessarily the vets. It's more of the younger guys letting it frustrate them. Um, so I'd love to go back and look at that and see if there's some context there as well. Um, but yeah, man, uh, this is a very, very important weekend for this Bulls team and Bulls fans still clinging on to a possible play in spot. This is the weekend that the Bulls need to go three and oh, at least well, including Monday. Uh, we'll talk about those in just a second, Matt. Want to tell our listeners first about our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is your, is your fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. The MLB is going on right now. The NBA is just wrapping up the regular season. Only a couple of weeks left. Uh, you can bet on the NHL. They're wrapping their season up as well. There's going to be playoffs soon. I'm having a lot of fun betting on the NBA season this year, and I know a lot of people are having a lot of fun betting on baseball in his first couple of weeks back. You can do that at betonline.ag. Use the promo code Locked. On and they're going to give you 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So you want to deposit $200, they're going to give you 100 for free to play with. Just go to betonline.ag and use the promo code locked on for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Um, so Milwaukee, any chance we have yeah. against Milwaukee tonight? Because Milwaukee, if I'm not mistaken, they were taken to overtime or they were taken pretty much to the end just this week by a team that had no business doing that. I, I don't have it in front of me. I don't have it off the top of my head. 
I think maybe Memphis. Maybe it was at Memphis. Memphis took them all the way to the end. That being said, Milwaukee has given up a bunch of games this season, Matt, where yeah, they, they should They just lost to Houston last night. That's it. There it is. Yeah. I'm wondering if coming off of a back-to-back, the Bulls are going to have to play a back-to-back here. You need everybody. So if I, I hate to say it. If you really want to make a play in, you got to have Thad play 35 minutes tonight. If you got to have somebody defending on Giannis the entire time. Uh, what are you worried about? For this game, maybe for this weekend stretch, do you have any any hope that the Bulls could be three and zero by the Ooh. time it comes Tuesday? I mean, what I'm worried about tonight is the fact that the Bucks are a much better team than we are. I mean, plain and simple, uh, you, you have to go back all the way to New Year's Day, January one was the first Bulls Bucks matchup of the season, and also the last time that these two teams faced off. Um, which is why you know we got to play them again before the season's done after tonight. But we got trounced. 126 to 96 was that score. Um, and look, we, we had a couple of blowout losses early in the season when we were trying to get our bearings and figure out who's doing what. But I, I mean, the Bucks just, they they worked a clinic and showed that they were a much better team that night. The Bulls allowed them to shoot, I think, 45% from downtown, uh, made 22 threes uh, against the Bulls. And the one thing that the Bulls did do well in that game was at least come close to being even on the boards because Milwaukee's one of the best rebounding teams in the league. They're the best rebounding team in the Eastern Conference. And when you're talking about, as I said, they're just a lot better than we are. When you go up against those teams, you can't give those teams extra opportunities to beat you. So especially on the defensive glass tonight, whether it's Vooch, whether it's Tice, whether it's gang gang rebounding and getting contributions on the boards from your guards, your wings – you can't let Milwaukee have more possessions than you do because that is why you will get blown out like you did last time. It hurts to say this, but uh, Milwaukee over the last 10 games, Matt, is second most in points per game as a team across the entire league. They're averaging 122.6 points per game. The only team scoring more because they're just taking every team to overtime and not playing any defense is the Wizards. Uh, the Bulls, unfortunately, man, uh, are scraping the bottom. They're second worst in points per game over the, this 10-game stretch, 103.7 points per game. So the Bulls like to do this a lot, Matt. It's They like to pick one side of the floor and play that consistently well, and the other side is atrocious usually. Yeah. If they're going to pick one side, we already know the offense isn't very good, at least over this 10-game stretch. Play phenomenal defense and give yourself a chance tonight against this team. If Gian- if Giannis takes over and does whatever he wants, we're screwed. Uh, that's all I got to say. Uh, throw Patrick Williams out there, and I'd like to see what he's improved on, too. Maybe he's picked up on the film that he uh, that he used in his first game. Maybe he's picked up some things across this season. I'd like to see how he defends Giannis tonight and some of the other guys on this team uh, compared to his first couple of weeks in this in this season. Um, but we're going to need Vooch, and we're going to need like 30, 35 from Vooch tonight. Oh, yeah. You're you're going to need that from Vooch, and you're going to need, whether it's Thad, Tice, Kobe White, maybe even Lowry, some of these role players to step up and give you a better effort than they did against New York a couple days ago. Uh, I don't expect the Bulls to be as atrocious uh, shooting the ball as they were against Milwaukee the first time around. The Bulls were 6 of 26 from behind the arc in that game. Um, that's just, you know, gross. When you make six threes and your opponent makes 22, there I mean, there's your ball game right there. But, I mean, one of our deadliest perimeter shooters, Zach Levine, is still out. Um, so who can contribute on the offensive end to try to keep pace with this Milwaukee team that, as you noted, is offensively humming? Drew Holiday has been playing really well recently. In this previous game, previous matchup, like, yeah, Giannis had 29 points, but... He didn't even shoot 50% from the field. He was one of five from downtown, and he missed eight free throws. So you got to assume, and they still put up a buck 26 on us. So I I am like, I'm going to be watching the game like this tonight as far as the Bulls on defense. I'm I'm scared. So the game plan is, is like when the Bulls early on get up like six or maybe they get up eight, you throw Felicio out there for 30 seconds and go just hack the (laughs) crap out of Giannis. Go hack Giannis, go send him to the free throw line and go make him miss free throws, man. Eight free throws he missed the other night? That's ridiculous. Uh, Felicio did log six minutes in the Bulls-Bucks game back on January 1st. I'm pretty (laughs) sure that was just mop-up duty, though. Uh, He did not log any fouls. 
He did have three rebounds and two assists, though. Um, yeah, I can uh, guarantee you he probably logged at least two or three of these. Is like uh, turnover on Felicio. He always does this with his hands. He's always like this at the ref. Are you kidding? Like, like Ricky Bobby. I'm. It's, I'm he's not, always. I'm like not this. sure what to do with my hands right now. <laughs> But that's the that's the game plan. Send send Giannis to the free throw line. Don't let him get easy buckets, and see if he can continue to just miss free throws left and right. Um, we're gonna need Tyson. We probably will see the jumbo lineup tonight. Now, I would assume so. Yeah, against this Milwaukee squad, you'll see, you know, the trio of, um, Tice, Thad, Lowry, Vooch. Three of those four on the floor for significant minutes tonight. But I tell you what, like. You know who I think needs to have a big game tonight? For you know, in addition to Vooch, obviously, we need to have a Kobe White 25 30 point game tonight. Like, Kobe has got to come out aggressive. He's had this recent stretch of games where, like, his shot's not falling in the first quarter or he has a rough first half and then he bounces back to his credit and has a stronger second half. But we need this to be a night where Kobe comes out firing. He's aggressive, he's attacking the basket. Also, when he can, looking to get teammates involved, but we can't have. Uh, a night where Kobe starts one of six with three turnovers at halftime. Like we will be dead in the water at halftime. If that happens, I'm telling you, man, I think he's, I think he's turned the corner. I like, obviously it's never good when your all-star is out for an extended period of time, but I think this has been kind of, kind of good for Kobe. Like this opportunity here, just individually for him and his development and his growth, man, I think he's turned a corner uh, even from a month ago when we were talking about all the struggles he was having, whether it be following jump shooters left and right, being frustrated by turnovers, not knocking down shots. I'm hoping that that's the case. And we won't find that out until Zach returns. If this truly is Kobe taking a turn for the better, or if it is more of a Kobe and Zach thing. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see, man. Uh, cause I think if that Zach does come back and play, if they don't just shut him down, you know, if they lose tonight, lose tomorrow and they're pretty much out of it, they might just say, all right, Zach, great season. Let's, you know, make sure you're healthy. We'll, we'll regroup this summer. Uh, speaking of Zach and his situation, Jordan, we got a little bit of an update on that earlier today. One of his teammates, uh, Tomas Sadaransky talking about his recent uh, communication with Zach and Sato's situation with COVID protocol earlier this season. So we want to touch on that. First, though, wanted to remind you all that today's episode is brought to you by our great friends at Built Bar. These new and improved Built Bars are even deliciouser than ever. Try some of their delicious flavors like cookies and cream. I had one of those for breakfast today. German chocolate, peanut butter, and mint brownie. These Built Bars are covered in 100% chocolate. They're soft. They're easy to chew. And they're great for the health-conscious sports fans out there. Lose your weight, maintain your weight while indulging in these delicious treats. They're low-calorie, low-sugar, high-protein, and high-fiber. Take, for example, that cookies and cream bar that I had this morning. 17 whole grams of protein, but only 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar and 4 grams of net carbs. And right now, for our Locked Out Bulls listeners, go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 They'll get twenty. Uh, they'll get fifteen percent off their next order. Again, that's promo code locked fifteen locked one five for fifteen percent off at builtbar.com. I like Chief Keith. Like Chief Keith has always been one of my favorite rappers out of Chicago. I don't know why I have that. I don't think I've ever played that on our show. It's just sitting racked up in my in like my soundboard here is there, and I just realized I've never used that. I don't have very many Zach drops either. Maybe I need to go back and grab some. But yes, you were saying about Zach and about Sadaransky. Right. So we were having this conversation on yesterday's episode, Jordan, about this weird, inexplained situation that Zach is in. Donovan saying yesterday he's probably going to be out for another week. Uh, Zach had that tweet before tip off of the Knicks game saying like these protocols are for the birds. I'm good. And then deleting that tweet, uh, maybe because he didn't want to get in trouble showing that frustration, but clearly he thinks that he should be back and playing now. And he's still dealing with the league's health and safety protocols. And we were talking about how is it that Zach got COVID if he did get COVID and none of his teammates were out for contact tracing, that doesn't make any sense. Well, so. We got this report from NBC Sports Chicago earlier today, interviewing Sato after this morning's shoot around. Uh, and here's what Sato said. I talked to Zach and I know how difficult it is. You want to be out there, especially Zach. He's a high energy guy who gets bored very easily. I definitely know he wants to be out here working out and getting better and helping the team. 
I just want to make sure he doesn't have any symptoms and wish him luck and tell him to be patient. I think he's getting there. I think he didn't really have uh, anything in terms of symptoms from what I heard from him. I hope the transition from being in isolation and going back to practice is going to be smooth for him because that's what cost me the most. I had a little more, let's say, serious symptoms in terms of being fatigued, loss of smell and taste. I don't think he had any of that. So hopefully it's going to be as quick as we hope for. So there's that. It sounds like his teammate, Sadoransky, is confirming that Zach did register a positive test for COVID-19, but it sounds like he pretty much has had an asymptomatic case of it, which is probably why Zach, who has now been out 16 days now, and who knows, maybe we still haven't heard in this report if he's registered a negative test or multiple negative tests yet, but clearly feels fine, not suffering from any symptoms whatsoever, and says, I want to be back out there. And Saad is saying, clearly, I understand his frustration, especially as we are in these you know, increasingly important games if we want to make the playoffs. And clearly, Zach wants to make the playoffs. And it's really hard for him right now that he can't be out there helping us win. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. And again, like like I said, too, I got to hear Zach say it out of his mouth. Just like, especially to, it, it does sound like that. To his respect, though, I don't want to, I don't want to say for sure, yes, he does or yes, he doesn't. Um, I wonder too if it's something with the testing process too. Like, didn't Garrett Temple have to pass three negative tests before he could show up to training camp? And I don't know if that's changed since the start of the season. Right. That's still the same. And that was in this report, that clarification. Uh, if a player tests positive, the league's return to play guidelines require cardiac screening in addition to returning uh, three negative tests. Better. All I'm saying is better safe than sorry. I know Zach is frustrated, and this couldn't come at a, at a worse time for not only him having his best year of his career, man, coming off an all-star bid, knowing that this was the most important stretch for this Bulls team, and most important, I, I feel like it's a pivotal point for Zach's career, too, and, and very much so for him. If you think about it and put yourself in his shoes for a second, this is a very pivotal moment. He, he's 25, actually just turned 26, Entering his prime, he's got one year left with a team that he spent four years with. He hasn't made the playoffs yet. He's had six coaches in six different years. All these different things happen to him. This being his best season and finally putting it all together, you trade for the All-Star, and then this happens. I can understand why he is visibly, uh, vocally frustrated. And that being said, I'm glad it's better safe than sorry, though, man. Like, better safe than sorry. And the NBA is just trying to do it to protect their players. And I understand that as well, but I, I think just the same Zach should be able to vo voice his opinion as well. I think everybody should be able to voice their opinion if they want. And it goes back to like Zach deleting that tweet. Like, did he decide that maybe that was a bad idea and uh, I'm just cooling off and you know what? I regret that tweet, take it down. Or did somebody ask him to take that down? That's the right. question. But I mean, and I like, I would guess that that was just kind of Zach's frustration boiling over in the heat of the moment. And that after a little bit of, uh, I know this is a salty word, but introspection, uh, we, he, he realized, you know, we're all trying to do this season and get through this season as safely as possible. And I understand that there are certain rules that have to be in place here. So hopefully it was just a very competitive guy like Zach seeing his team out there, you know, desperately trying to win some games to get into the playoffs and feeling helpless because he's not on the court with them, leading them like he had been all season. So I, I certainly, if you put yourself in Zach's shoes, you can understand that you might have a weak moment where the frustration boils over and you're like, damn it, I want to play. I feel fine. I want to play. Um, you know, it, like it makes me think of uh, Jordan in his second season when he had that, you know, the broken foot injury and he missed the, like the first three quarters of the season comes back and, you know, he even went back to his, you know, UNC campus and was playing pick up five on five with his old college teammates. The Bulls didn't know it. And he clearly was like, I know my body. I know what my body's capable of playing. I want to play. And the Bulls were like, well, you can only play seven minutes a half. And it pissed the hell out of him. I'm not I'm not putting Zach Levine and his competitive drive on the same level as MJ because nobody's is. But it's that, you know, it's the same competitiveness of a pro athlete who wants to help his team win. Um. That being said, the thing I still can't get over here, Jordan, with this most recent update, 
if Zach did, in fact, register a positive test and had COVID, whether symptomatic or not, how did none of his teammates have to be held out for contact tracing? I don't understand that at all. Yeah, that's a good question, man. Like, yeah, I still can't. Did they play a game the night before he was out? Um, What do you mean the night before he was out? Like so, like, the, it, 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 the, the supposed night he came in contact with somebody or someone or s- whatever, did they play a game against somebody? Was it more so that he would have come in contact with somebody at the training camp during a practice while traveling? Like, that's what I don't understand is, like, where are they pointing, pinpointing day one of, hey, this is who you get, may have came in contact with and or you tested positive? Like, when did they find that out and isolate him? That's my question because that right. maybe clear up the answer. I mean, common sense tells you that it wasn't someone within the team, you know, not uh, not a team staff member, anybody who travels with the team on road trips, not a coach, clearly none of his teammates because we would have heard about that. It had to be someone else in a different circle that Zach was seeing who, you know, got it from somebody because they saw somebody, you know, these crazy contact tracing scenarios that to me is the only logical explanation is that somehow he got it when the, maybe like the bulls had an off day and he was in contact with somebody outside the team and found out quickly because these players, I think are still getting tested on a daily basis. So maybe it's an off day that the bulls have. Maybe it was a a rare scenario where the bulls had, you know, two, two days where they didn't play a game. And on the second of those two days, boom, he he like a a positive test comes up. And so they isolate him from the rest of the team and have to do their contact tracing to figure out where it came from. And the most likely explanation is it came from somewhere outside of the team and the team's bubble. So it's a very bizarre situation, man. And it's like the thing that amplifies it, at least for Bulls fans and for me, is like, sorry to say it, but the Nets can afford to lose KD for two weeks of games. They had James Harden and Kyrie. And they had already been one of the best teams in the league before losing KD for that stretch of time. The Bulls couldn't afford that, man. And that's what's, I think, the most frustrating is the Bulls could not afford to lose Zach for the amount of time that they have in such a critical stretch. And it's it's frustrating, man. And I, I'm again, I, I would like to hear from Zach whenever that is, probably over the next week or so when he returns, and maybe clear up some of this because... I don't know. Like, I would like like to know. Like, is it the organization? It's is it Zach? Is it the NBA? Who is right? Who, who is in charge of that? And and he's probably because I I think there are you know written rules in place that state if a player doesn't want their name to be revealed for having tested positive, we don't we aren't forcing them to reveal. Yes, I tested positive. They can keep that anonymous if they prefer. Um, and so. Even that has been weird about this, where like we never officially heard in any confirmed report, yes, Zach tested positive. We just heard out for health and safety protocols. And then like like I said yesterday, Cowley was tweeting as if he were positive. And what we heard from his teammate Sato today supports that. Simultaneously, if you're Zach, I could also understand if it was somebody in your inner circle, a family member, a close friend, his fiance, whomever, who was the one who gave it to him, I understand Zach not wanting to throw that person under the bus and drag them into this public, you know, this this PR nightmare of our best players on the shelf at a critical point in the season because he contracted COVID-19. I mean, man, it doesn't even have to be a family member. It could have been somebody, you know, that that works in the Bulls facility. It could have been a security guard, whoever. But like it could have been it could have been by chance. Like mm-hmm. you don't know, right? And and I think to your point that is that is 100% it is like if you don't want to throw anybody under the bus and have people coming out with their pitchforks and, and screaming and yelling at, at somebody when, again, it's not, like if you're taking all the protocol, the precautions that you need, it can still happen. You could be perfectly, you can do everything perfectly right and still end up with it. That's just, it sucks, man. That's what sucks about this virus, uh, among many things. Um, it's yeah. frustrating as a Bulls fan. It, it really is, and I understand Zach's frustration as well. We'll get answers cleared up, though. As soon as he's able to talk, I know he will. And um, hopefully at that point, sometime mid-next week, I'm crossing my fingers that the Bulls still have some type of hope of uh, maybe 
snatching a nine or 10 seed here in this play in game, at least for Zach's sake, right? Like let Zach get an opportunity to come back and, and try to like, it would suck to come back and the bulls are officially eliminated. That would suck. And he probably wouldn't come back at that point. I wouldn't to, to risk injury, man, I would not do that, but um, right. we'll find out, ma'am. And I mean, as far as what the bulls have ahead of them, catching these teams is going to be tricky because I think of the teams in seven through 10, they, I know they play Charlotte again. Do they play Indy again? I think they might be done playing any, but so like Charlotte is four games ahead of them. Charlotte's an eighth right now. The team that's catchable theoretically is Washington, maybe Indy if Indy, you know, slides, but you're, you're sitting two games back um, as, as you head into a a back-to-back against two pretty darn good teams in Milwaukee and Atlanta. If you drop these two games and, and Washington picks up not even two wins, but another win by the end of this weekend, you're pretty much dead in the water. And at that point, you know, what, what why bring Zach back? It, it, I'm, it would be so frustrating for him to, what, come back and play meaningless games? I know that we're mathematically eliminated. If I'm Zach, I'm saying, see you next season, y'all. But yeah, it would really suck if by the time he's finally allowed back after, you know, jumping through all of these hoops for the health and safety protocols, they're they're dead in the water and he can't help. It would be a really really, you know, frustrating situation for for Zach and for everybody. This is a big game. Like now that I look even at the schedule even more, man, this is a big game tonight against the Bucks because I, I full well believe that the Bulls the Atlanta's been the Bulls weird like rival this year. The Atlanta's kicked our ass both times they've played us. That's a game I still am fully convinced the Bulls can win even without Zach. That being said, Tonight's game oh, is the most dude, important. We're not, they, we're not winning the Chris Dunn revenge game. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Chris Dunn revenge game. Damn. And it's going to be Tony Snell time. Like there is a lot of former Bulls on that team. Uh, Rajon Rondo of uh, Rondo time as well. Uh, but oh, yeah. they play the. So these three games that if it is a week and Zach can come back and be cleared by Thursday, he could potentially like theoretically be ready for the Hornets game, which. That one is not on national TV, but the Boston game is on Friday. So Zach could be back potentially for that Hornet Celtics series, and the Bulls could very much be alive still. The, they need to come out after Monday night's game at the very worst two and one. If you're one and two, you can wrap it up. But three and zero oh would be the ideal. Two and one, I still think you're hanging on by a thread. Just give Zach an opportunity if he comes back by Thursday to go up against the Hornets and finish out this season. Yeah. Um. And look, we we know that we can beat Boston. We did it a week ago. Um, but man, that that Philly game in between Atlanta and Charlotte, that's the one that I'm worrying might be the official final nail in the coffin. Um, Hopefully they, they said Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, and it's uh, it's a lot closer than, than with those guys. I'm just trying to keep optimism alive for another, what, 72 hours before things say, well, it really, you could say another four or five hours before they get their heads kicked in by the Bucks. but I digress. And, yeah, uh, you do you i'm already thinking about bears training camp baby <laughs> yeah so let's hopefully we come out of this weekend and we have some positive things to talk about heading into the sixers game hit us up with your reaction though 331-979-1369 drop your text your voicemails anything you got for us at 331-979-1369 for matt peck i'm jordan malley bulls nation have a wonderful weekend we'll be back on monday with a fresh episode for jordan and matt we are out deuces